We're at the fifth in the series of baffle reefs. This is Carlos Reef. It runs from the barrier island to the mainland in one continuous uh, piece. It used to be all this elevation right here that's in front of us, which created a baffle in the movement of water from San Antonio, Espiritu Santo into Aransas Bay, it slowed it down, attenuated the waves, on and on and on. This is Carlos Reef, where it connects to San Jose Island and extends across Carlos Bay into Bloodworth Island. At one time, this was a continuous, uninterrupted structure, but today this once healthy oyster reef has weakened and fragmented, therefore diminishing its benefits as a baffle structure. We're coming upon an intact stretch of the reef, which represents how the reef appeared historically. When we compare the Google Earth images from 2016 versus an image of the reef from 2022, it's easy to see what we have lost. More importantly, these images also forecast the destruction we face if we allow this to continue by doing nothing. We're looking now at a section of the reef in its original elevation from the bay floor as it extends toward Carlos Dugout and the nearby Rookery Island. The fingers of Carlos Reef run east and west, whereas Carlos Reef itself intersects the entire bay. Here is the Rookery Island at Carlos Dugout. As you can see, the elevation of the reef on the north side is very prominent, representative of how it looked for decades or even centuries. Again, these reefs serve as a baffle between San Antonio and Aransas Bays, slowing the water flow, thus staving off erosion while allowing oysters to thrive as nature intended. This reef has been degraded by natural and man-made causes, which has created breaches or gaps in the structure. Oyster boats have used some of these breaches to further degrade the reef during the annual harvest. If we don't put a stop to this, we will lose these reefs along with the benefits they provide to the fishery and to the ecosystem as a whole. We cannot afford to let this happen.